Welcome back, I'm Orion Carrington. They say a New York bagel only tastes like a New York bagel in New York. The reason is the water. You just can't get that New York water anywhere else. Until now. Chef Joshua Pollock has not only brought his love for New York City establishments to Denver, but has also found a way to replicate the water that gives those NYC bagels their unique taste. Pair that with house-made lox, pastrami, and corned beef, and you got yourself a NYC 123 combo that's just a few minutes away out in the Stanley Marketplace. Let's get in there. Hey, Joshua Orion. Nice to meet you. I'll give you a pound. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, I feel like I'm in New York right now. That's what we got, a little bit of New York here in Denver, Colorado. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about Rosenberg's. How'd this come, place come to be? Well, I grew up in North Jersey, just outside of Manhattan. Uh, on my mom's side, the Rosenberg side, um, I'm fifth generation born in Manhattan. And uh, I came out to school here at CU, but uh, quickly realized the food I grew up eating, bagels, Jewish jelly appetizing didn't really exist as I knew it, so um, I set out to do that uh, when I was in school, and, and, and now my dreams have become a reality. So, how did you get like the recipes and like smoking? I'm looking at all these beautiful salmon down here, and how did you get all these? Well, so for our bagels, I learned from uh, a family friend of ours in New Jersey has four bagel shops. So I went, I spent a lot of time with uh, fourth generation bagel makers. Uh, we also did a lot of research to determine that New York water is one of the main ingredients in really good New York bagels. So, uh, Tell me a little bit more about that because I've, I've lived here my whole life and you definitely cannot get the same type of bagel taste that you get out of New York. Yeah, we always heard it was a myth and uh, it's uh, bagels and pizza in New York are always better. So uh, we tested water from all over the city and uh, determined that it had some higher levels of certain minerals that affect the strength of gluten. We used a CSU out here in Colorado to do all the testing for us, and uh, then we hired a company to make us a fancy machine that recreates New York water chemistry. So we use New York water in our New York bagels. Yeah, so it's about as authentic as you can get. Outside of New York. <laughs> and then the salmon, again, I, so I grew up, um, you know, frequenting places in the Lower East Side, Russ and Daughters, uh, Barney Greengrass, that you'd walk in and you'd see just a whole plethora of smoked fish and see it masterfully hand sliced and, and growing up as a kid that was like one of my favorite things to watch in New York. So uh, when I decided to do a bagel shop I said we have to have all that too. As you can see we've got quite a quite a few different types of smoked fish. We don't just smoke salmon, we do uh, sable, uh, sturgeon, whitefish. We kind of kind of do it all. Well I definitely want to try some of that and try some of the bagels. Yeah, let's do that. So right here we've got our Gravlox. Gravlox is a Scandinavian method preparation. Okay. It's cured but not smoked at all. So it's got lemon and dill on top. It's really fresh and herbaceous. Slice right some of this up for you to try real quick. Try that. <laughs> so yeah, that's the Gravlox. You get, you know, the herbaceous notes. Yeah. Um, but it's really clean and smooth. Not that's a lot exactly of smoke flavor. Say. Yeah, I mean it's it's just a, a clean fish, you know, like you're not getting too much of the salt, which is what I thought you'd get. This is a dry cure. So the cure is, it's a dry rub that it sits on versus a brine is a wet solution that it'll soak in. And so this is our Scottish smoked salmon. So you can see subtle differences in the fat to flesh ratio. Um, Scottish salmon tends to be a little fattier. Yeah, I can't get over how beautiful it looks when you cut into it, right? Wow, man, that's... It's like a little bit of home yeah. <laughs> for me. It still has like a nice, fresh, clean taste. So the Scottish has become very popular. It's really well balanced. A lot of chefs are using it. And so we actually take that same fish for our pastrami uh, lox, or pastramen as we're coining it. It's covered in this uh, spice mixture, which is mostly, you know, pepper, coriander, a little bit of brown sugar, and then we smoke it for eight hours. Try that. It's become really popular. Yeah. Wow. All right. It tastes like pastrami. Smoky. It's had the spice from the different the rub that's on there. You know, when people think about lox or they think about salmon, and they're not from the places that I came from, they really don't think of the versatility that you're able to get out of that fish. And um, Really, you have very similar salmon just prepared three different ways here. And they all definitely have their own unique flavor. Well, oh, man, this just wet my palate to have everything else in the restaurant. Let's go build some sandwiches. Let's do it.
All right, so here we are with both of the bagels. That pastrami looks amazing, but let me start on the lox. Yeah, so that's the grab lox we were slicing up earlier. It's uh, cured but not smoked. We've got some scallion cream cheese, tomatoes, capers, onions, and then that's an egg everything bagel. Not a, not a lot of people make egg bagels out here. Growing up, that was a staple in New Jersey, so right. it was a must when we opened the bagel store here. The bagel itself is nice and chewy and delicious and then you have all the different ingredients and it's a classic take but this has got to be one of the best ones i've ever had awesome thank you so oh, much sure oh man <laughs> and then that cleanness of the fish that exactly all yeah so that's you know we call our grab locks the gateway fish so the grab locks is that clean uh -huh. lemon dill finish um no smoke at all yeah. it's it's a good entry level for anyone that's looking to get into bagels and locks i I'm hooked. Awesome. I'm, I'm now an addict, so the gateway worked. Well, here you go. We started you with the fish, but we'll finish you with the pastrami because that's the heavy hitter. This is a navel cut of beef, which is the, uh, the fatty tip of the brisket. And that is uh, brined for two weeks, smoked all night, and then we steam it to order and hand slice. And we've wow. got some melted Swiss on there with deli mustard and uh, coleslaw on a pumpernickel bagel. That's probably my favorite sandwich of all time. It's a perfect sandwich. Well, thank you. You know, like, you get the smoky and fatty from the, from the beef itself, the pastrami. Then you have all the other things that accompany it. You know, it's like a, a thunderstorm of flavor yeah. that's happening in my mouth. You get flavors coming from here, coming from there. It's packed. You know, we've gotten some sandwiches down, but we do other Jewish deli specialties here. Okay. Uh, we're really proud of our matzo ball soup. I've never had matzo oh, ball soup. Oh, man. Well, you're about to have some of the best. Right here, I call it the recipe of three bubbies. It's a mixture of uh, three of our grandmother's recipes. We do everything from scratch, so um, we roast the whole chickens, and we use the bones and the vegetable scraps right. to make the broth. Matzo meal comes from one of two purveyors in the country, but the technique and how you form that ball is different from every grandma. Really? Yeah, so when someone tells you their grandma made the best matzo balls, yeah. it's pretty much the same ingredients, just with a different technique. So for us, we want it to be firm enough to hold up in a hot soup. Right. Um, but you should be able to just break right into that thing. How have I been missing out on matzo ball soup? I don't know. You know, we came with the three different recipes and we picked the best of them, and, and this is what we ended up with for Rosenberg's matzo ball soup. Thanks, grandmas. And then next, we've got some potato latkes. You know, we went for these. something that um, you still have those chunks of potatoes in it, but uh, we've got onion, a little bit of matzo meal as a thickener. Right in the amount of crunchy. Yeah, you don't want it to be too oily, good amount of salt in there. Yeah, great amount of salt. And then you combine it with the sweet and then the creamy that you have there. That's an excellent, excellent accompaniment of all the different things that we have here. It looks like we got one more thing going one on. One more thing. Um, they're called so bagel balls. So these are new, yep. So the flavor combinations are endless, but the most popular one we've done so far is an everything bagel dough. Okay. And on the inside, they're stuffed with bacon, scallion, cream cheese. Oh, shut yeah, your perfect. mouth. This is happening in a ball right here. Yeah. Well, you, and you almost get a perfect bite, which yeah. is the beauty of it. How come nobody's thought of a bagel ball in Denver before. The perfect amount of cream cheese with the, ba the bacon and then your everything, again with all the seasoning that's Yeah, the flavoring. There. These are dangerous. Yeah. And then we noticed that we have the, the Dr. Brown. Can't be a Jewish jelly without Dr. Brown soda. They've been around since 1869. Okay. Um, this is what made them famous, a celery soda. It's a little weird when you think about it, but it's actually really delicious. And then this is my all-time favorite, black cherry. Um, goes really well. I can't think of having a pastrami sandwich with that one, so. Yeah, uh, I'll try it. this one. Yeah, and well, cheers. <laughs> For sure. It is good. Right? Well, hey, man, thanks so much for having us. I really appreciate you coming down and checking it out. A taste of New York right here in Denver. Exactly. Yeah. Make sure you guys check them out. Stick around. I'm not seeing.